Sonny finally runs into Rick in an explosive confrontation and Alexis is backed into a corner by the police. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. On today's General Hospital, Sonny shows up at the gallery to let Ava know about postponing Avery's custody court date. If you don't want to fight, Sonny, give me back my daughter. She's not giving up, and she's not postponing. Sonny tells her this postponement is a gift, to find a hack lawyer. Rick comes in just then to tell Sonny he's her lawyer, and I'm not afraid of going up against Diane Miller. Sonny admits he heard his brother was in town, after which Rick needles him about his hot mess daughter Christina, and how easy it'll be to prove Sonny's an unfit parent. Sonny blasts Rick on turning the mother of his daughter into the police. You vindictive son of a bitch. He's sure Rick's feeling guilty about not being in Molly's life. Ava tries to redirect them to her problems, and Sonny snaps at her that this deadbeat dad, who took Molly's mom away, isn't the best person to fight for her kid. The brothers fight about Alexis, and which of their daughters has gotten the short end of the stick. Sonny rolls his eyes and shouts, you're still whining about our mother giving you up and keeping me. Ava again tries to get them focused on her problems, but Sonny and Rick fight some more over Alexis and Christina. Rick tells his brother that if he wants to save Alexis, maybe he should save the cops some time and turn himself in. Before Sonny storms off, he tells Ava that Rick will do to her what he does to everybody. He's gonna turn on you. Danny runs into the hospital to see Dante, telling Liz Jason just left for Africa to find Lucky. His dad's going to save Lucky and Lulu, but Liz wants more info about where Lucky is. Danny doesn't know much, he just wanted to run and tell Dante the good news. Florence Pugh took acting break after realizing how much of her life she'd missed. Over at the Quartermains, Tracy demands to know why Sasha thought she could hold social events on the family property. A brunch? Sasha apologizes, but Tracy isn't having it. There are boundaries, Sasha casually asks. So if Cody throws a party, would you stop him? That freezes Tracy's smile on her face. After a bit of thinking, Tracy tells Sasha that the insinuation masquerading as a question is a non-issue. He wouldn't do this and there's no favoritism. B.S. there isn't, Sasha says, but that's fine. But still... He has his own family now and Tracy needs to let him connect with them. Tracy then lays into Sasha about wasting her time and wasting her talent. Her food is amazing, the best Tracy's had, and at some point she needs to do more with her life than making Cody happy. Alexis paces in the PCPD until Mac comes in to talk to her. She doesn't have a lawyer yet and just wants her phone call. Sam, played again by Lindsay Hartley comes in to find out what's going on. Alexis isn't sure what the new evidence they have on her is, but it's something big. She'll find out what it is by agreeing to be interviewed. Sam's the ghast, especially when Alexis suggests she'll have to represent herself because Diane's representing Sonny. Before she can get too far into it, though she gets a text from Liz about Danny and Jason. Alexis shoos her away and insists she'll be fine. But if she's not, Sam has to promise to look after Christina. Mac comes in after, at which point Alexis says she'll do the interview without a lawyer. Are you sure? She is, but he can't do the interview because of their personal relationship, so he calls in Detective Bennett to do it. They go over the risks of what she's doing, then get started with how she got her hands on the gun. She tells him she found the gun near the driveway after dinner but has no idea how it got there. She wanted the gun off her property because of her grandchildren, but throwing it away was stupid in hindsight. She fishes for whether that's all they have, and if so, she needs to be released. That's not. They're just getting started. They go over details about when she threw the gun away, how she got to Blackstone, and what she did after. Alexis flashes back to realizing Christina took her keys that night. Anything might have slipped your memory, the detective asks, 
cautioning her to answer the next question truthfully. Alexis looks worried as he walks behind her, leans over, and asks if anyone drove her car on the night of Kate's murder. Sam runs off to Danny to find out what's going on. He excitedly fills his mom in about Jason playing hero, though she's not thrilled to hear that Jason's already run off. Liz sends Danny away, and Sam goes off on Jason coming home enough for Danny to fall in love with him, then run off again to potentially get killed. Liz tries assuring her that if anyone can bring Lucky back, it's Jason, but Sam's ticked that he won't make Danny his priority. He abandons Danny with a text, and he still thinks he's a hero. Liz commiserates about her similar problems with Lucky and Aiden. Sam used to be the same and accept Jason for what he is, but she realized her kids needed one parent there for them. Sam turns the conversation to how Liz will handle Lucky coming home, which doesn't thrill her. She just wants Lucky safe. That's all she can manage right now. Sam tells her Lucky and Aiden will have trouble just like Danny and Jason did, not to mention the extra feelings Liz has. Lucky won't stay for his son, and when he leaves, Liz will lay awake wondering if he never comes back again next time. Christina barges into Molly at work, demanding to know if she turned her in for Kate's murder. Molly just shrugs that she told the police Christina was unaccounted for, and the two bicker some more over the baby. Molly tells Christina to stop making everything about her. She's just looking to help Alexis who's covering for her. Christina counters that Molly got their mom arrested by going to the police in the first place about her. This is a new low, even for you. The two then fight once again over the baby until Molly tells Christina that if she wants to help their mom, she needs to confess. Molly, I cannot confess to a crime I did not commit. Dex calls Molly to tell her that Alexis has been arrested and she's talking without a lawyer. Molly gets ready to run off, but not before demanding to know if Christina murdered Kate's. She has to confess if she did it. Christina says she'll explain on the way to the station, but Molly says that unless there's a full confession from who did, nothing will help Alexis. Molly storms off telling Christina to stay away if she can't help, so Christina texts Dante asking where he is. Dante's holding Lulu's hand when Cody comes in, figuring it was time to meet Lulu. Dante waxes on about Lulu's virtues and says it was his fault their marriage fell apart, though he wouldn't change his relationship with Sam. But he thinks that after his last case, he did for the WSB, something inside Lulu broke. She never got her spark back and he never should have left. He loves his life, but he'd give anything to see Lulu back, feisty and fiery. Dante gets Christina's text and looks up worriedly. She's in trouble. In the show's final moments, Sam tries reassuring Danny, but he's not worried. Dad's gonna be fine. You just got to have a little faith. He smiles, sure that Jason will solve everything. Ava warns Rick to be careful, but he's not afraid. And he's a great lawyer. Does Sonny have a point? Can I trust you? Rick won't let her roll over for Sonny, and she says that's fine. Just get Avery away from Sonny for good. Dante leaves Cody to watch over Lulu while he goes to Christina. Cody introduces himself. Out at the nurse's station, Christina runs in asking if Dante can find out why they arrested her mom. He's not on the case, but if they arrested her, they must have serious evidence. Sasha tells Tracy that she's flattered about the interest, but she's pretty sure this is all about the party she threw Cody and his family because Tracy's afraid of losing him. She doesn't have many friends. You ever wonder why? Tracy just looks off. Alexis says she was the only person to drive her car that night. You see, that's interesting. Because your car was seen parked in the quarter main driveway around the same time Kate's was shot. Just after, Sonny shows up at the PCPD and asks Molly what's going on. Alexis is in there, burying herself to protect your daughter.